Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Kevin from Audio Digital and today I'm here to show you how to do a record stretch effect in the grid. Now these techniques can be used in the sampler in Bitwig as well, but it works a little better in the grid for reasons that you will see soon. So let's go ahead and get a sample loop here and just throw it into the sampler module and play it back. So now if we want to scratch this sample, you might already anticipate what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into the freeze mode and now we can move the playhead freely just like we would a record needle on a record, right? But that doesn't really sound so much like a record stretch, and that's because of the resolution of this knob. It's not quite able to give us the, the fine detail needed to do a real deal record stretch. So one of the things you might think to do is to come in here and get a uh, MIDI device going on, get your mod wheel and control the position, and then do a little stretching like that. But that doesn't work so good. And the reason is because the mod wheel in pretty much every MIDI controller has 127 um, like uh, steps that it can go to. And so what we're doing is we're just playing a, a series of, a, of a, about 128 samples as I scan through the range there. And that's not enough to resolve a you know 44k or 48k sample so what we want to do is smooth out this motion so that we can actually scan the playhead continually instead of just going to discrete jumps so to do that what we can do is get a value here and what we're going to do is control the value with the mod wheel and we're going to disconnect it from the playhead here then we want to go ahead and get an modulator out and connect these up and modulate this with the playhead. And now when we play, same exact thing because we still need to smooth that out. So let's go into level and we're going to use the um, average here. Plug that in and now let's try it. So that's a lot better. We can play with the average here and get some smoother results. But also if you're gonna do mod wheel base um, stretching, you probably wanna zoom in a bit your range so that you can have more control. And with some practice, you can get pretty good at it and make some pretty convincing stretch effects. Now you could use this uh, same technique and modulate the playhead using modulation in a track or in a clip and that will work great too. It might be a little tedious to program every little bit of the envelope but that completely works. But you'll still maybe want to zoom in to the section of the sample that you want to, um, that you want to stretch, right? But what if you want to do it um, in a more live uh, setting and you don't want to have to worry about your performance as much. You just want to be able to stretch a sample whenever you want. Well, what we can do is have the sample playback as normal and then whenever we want, we can just initiate a stretch effect. So in order to do that, what we're going to need to do is bring in an LFO here. And this LFO is going to drive the playhead for us. So we're gonna disengage the mod wheel here from the playhead, and we're going to go ahead and make this LFO engage the playhead, and we want to give it a, a nice ramp up. And I think this is like two bars, so let's try it at two bars and see what we get. Oh, that's too fast. Well, we want to go to bars, that's the problem. Too fast, let's go to four. So yeah, that's just gonna play back as normal, but we're still in freeze mode. 
So the next thing we want to happen is we want to be able to stop the the playback of the sample and then stretch it. But then we want to resume where we would have been had we not have stopped the sample. And that's kind of like how uh, DJs would use two copies of the same record and then they would stretch on one while the other one was playing back and then crossfade to the other one to resume where they picked uh, where they left off so that the beat, the flow of the beat continues. So we're going to do that sort of thing. And to do that, we're going to use the uh, hold module and hook this up. And then we're going to hook the output of that to another mod out. And we're going to take the modulation that used to be on this modulator and we're just going to drag it and drop it right onto this one. So now it's being modulated from the hold and everything sounds exactly the same. But what we want to do is, um, let me turn that off, is we want it to, anytime I engage the, the model wheel or turn the model wheel up, we want it to stop this LFO dead in its track. And then if I come back down, we want to resume. So to do that, we're going to use a logic tool here. We're going to use the greater than, and anytime it's greater than zero, because I'm not plugging anything in here, so it's gonna, it's gonna be a zero. Anytime it's greater than zero, it's going to turn on and then stop the playback. So let's try that. Turned it up and it resumes where I left it. Okay, so that part's working. But now also when we stop it, we want to stretch. So let's get another LFO, drop this in. We're gonna do a sine wave here and let's say uh, eighth notes. That sounds like fun. So the output of this guy, we wanna be able to attenuate it. So we're gonna add an attenuator and then we're gonna add a modulator to the end of that, like so. Turn this down. So as soon as we turn on the mod wheel, we want there to be a little bit of level here. So we can get another modulator, hook it up and make it go to like right there, let's say. So as soon as the value's not zero, we'll get this much value. And then after that, we want to go ahead and let us control the rest of the throw with, uh, with the mod wheel by continually turning it up. And then that wave, we wanna use that to modulate the playback to about, let's say 0.4. That's good, let's do that. So now let's see if that all works. We're playing along like normal and now. So we can see, if you can't see down there too well, we can see it moving along. So that's how that works and you can tweak that and play with that. But this is kind of the basic construct of what you do to make a stretch machine such as you see here. We could also do some variations, add some more LFOs and um, make them at say, you know, a higher speed or something if I wanted to scale it up. And then I could assign the this other LFO to a different key on the keyboard so that I can do one kind of stretch when I do one key and a different one when I do a different key. And um, I'm not gonna show you that here, but you can imagine how you could make a whole range of different stretches using LFOs or using, you could use like a four step to do some different forms of stretching and just connect this to the playhead and turn it on when you're doing your mod wheel or when you're hitting a key and you can get a really in-depth and convincing performance out of this technique. So anyway, that's the record stretching technique. Of course, even if I just take a different sample and throw it in, it's gonna still keep working. So you can set this up once and throw in any sample you want and it'll still work. 
So I hope this has been helpful for you and uh, use this technique and have fun with it. It's, it's really good if you're into that sort of thing, which I am. And thanks for watching this. Don't forget to, to like and subscribe to my channel. It helps me to know to make more content like this if I know that people are enjoying it. So thanks so much again for watching and have a great day. Bye.